Welcome to Q&A Selling Online with answers to questions about creating an online empire, promoting products, or building a brand. Your host, private label and e-commerce entrepreneur, Quinn Amorm. Welcome back to the show, my friends. Today we have with us the founder of ProfitPay. For seven years, he was also the CEO. He has been an entrepreneur since the age of 19. He learned from the school of hard knocks. This is something I love that expression. Uh, recently raised 25 million and he actually almost died, but he came back to life and he made this successful company. So Chase Harmer, how's it going, Chase? Hey, uh, great to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, now, I mentioned you are the founder and you were for the longest time the CEO of Profit Pay. Sure. Uh, but this isn't your first venture, right? Uh, no, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old. Um, I think, you know, I had my first partnership probably when I was 20 that failed, but um, I ended up starting a successful business and staying in the credit card business for all that time. And we started building technology and kind of done a lot of investments along the way too. secondary market share investing. Um, you know, we have guys that are selling on Amazon and, and uh, online as well. And, and uh, so there's just, there's a whole bunch of opportunity out there, you know? So. Nice. Yeah. So what is this about you almost dying? Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> well, I almost died. Like, yeah, probably physically as well, but um, you know, definitely like the company, like we got to a point where we were building so much. And I think we were so concentrated on building product that we just um, lost sight of making money. Um, so I think, you know, there, there's something to that. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that are selling stuff on Amazon, it's all about making money, but when we're building technology, um, I think you get lost in the weeds sometimes. And so, but we were able to, you know, make it all work and make a successful company, but it took, you know, it took what it took, I guess, to get here. <laughs> yeah. You know what, that, that's actually re really good, cool uh, that you said that because I feel that sometimes when you're really passionate about something, you forget about making money. You're just doing it because it pleases you to do something. And then you realize, you know what, I actually, I, I, I still got to eat, right? And I got a team to pay. Uh, so it's kind of that what happened is that you're just so passionate about it. that if it slipped your mind. No, you know, I think, yeah, it's like, it's so being a CEO is, is hard, you know, being a founder, um, you know, and if I lose you here, uh, cause my internet connection seems to be a little weird, um, uh, you know, let me know, but okay. uh, being a founder is like, you, you, I'm a visionary, you know, and you have like so many things that you want to do. And I think, that um, the shiny object them is a problem, you know, because you can kind of see like, oh, I got to keep innovating and keep on doing these things. But, you know, along the way, you have to go, okay, like we have products that work right now. We need to focus on those and start making some revenue while we're still building, right? Because if you, unless you're constantly raising capital all the time, right? It, and it's hard to do that and innovate and like build successfully and, you know, sell. So it's like, I think, you know, it's just all about focus and, uh, you know, so I think, yeah, being a CEO is tough. It's a tough job, um, but I, I'm better at vision and then growing the relationships. And you just, I think knowing part of being successful is knowing where your strengths are, you yes. know? So, yes. I mean, that's the key. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, if, if you're not doing a good job in, in something, you know, focus on the things that you are doing a good job at and then put people in the places that you're weak, you know? Yes. You know, that is a hundred percent. I actually, I mentioned a few times, I have a couple of podcasts and mentioned a few times how so many people launched, uh, for example, a ClickFunnels competitor, uh -huh. and they always made the CEO the spokesperson. Uh -huh. And not everybody speaks like Russell Brunson, right? Not everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's just you need to know what your strengths are <laughs> and, and hire somebody else to do what you're not good at. That's yeah, it. Totally. I think in fintech, we have an advantage because, you know, I'm able to do those kind of speaking things. And I think a lot of other people inside this space specifically that are building technology are kind of, they don't have those capabilities. So I think that, you know, and those are definitely weaknesses for sure. If you, if you're trying to do it, you're not, you're not good at it. Yeah. So profit pay your company, yeah. uh, that is, is it a payment processor, something like Stripe competitor, or PayPal competitor. Um, yeah, so we, I think we we have a big campaign uh, that we're launching. Um, it's us versus Stripe <clears throat> campaign, and it's like the old Mike Tyson's punch out kind of thing. It's pretty cool, but yeah, I mean, we're we're all things. Like most payment processes are just payment processors. 
Then you have fraud prevention companies, and then you might have a gateway, like you have like authorized.net, then you have we're all things. So we built out the gateway, we're the payment processor, we're we're basically like a payfac. A payfac is able to do payouts, pay-ins, we're the platform that kind of connects everything. Uh, so if you think about like what Stripe Connect can do, um, that's like we have those types of capabilities and so in a long-winded way, yes, we're their competitor, but we don't just do payment processing. We're like the whole thing, you know? Nice. So, yeah. so basically if I have a any kind of e-commerce site, like a, a WooCommerce, Shopify, I can uh, accept payments through ProfitPay? Correct. And we charge um, less than uh, Stripe does, right? So, you know, our, our the competition is what, 2.9 and 30 cents. So we make it as easy to connect as they do now, we can get an account proved in, in 24 hours and you just get the KYC done within 10 seconds. Um, so at, at that point, you can start processing transactions. You just plug it into your WooCommerce or your Shopify and you're off to the races and we do for less uh, less money than they do. So Beautiful. Now, the name I can understand, uh, I don't know if there's a story behind it, it's very, but it's, I'm guessing it's pretty straightforward. But the logo, is it a flying pig? Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. nice. Okay. So um, where where that come from? Is it kind of like the piggy bank or something well, else? Yeah. So like the idea was, um, you know, it was kind of like a piggy bank, but also like, you know, being all things is incredibly difficult. So like when pigs fly, you know, it's kind of like, hey, you know, it's, uh, you know, and plus there wasn't anything else like it in the market. I also feel like in a weird way, um, the pig kind of connects you to the brand a little bit. Um, whereas like, you know, if you're just a, like a logo, it's a little bit harder to have that connection. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like a, it's a marketing thing, you know? Yeah, and no, it definitely is. And it, <laughs> that's why I brought it up because of the uniqueness. And I love things that are unique, right? It's not like, uh, for example, you look at a bunch of real estate uh, agents that, that have their own logos. Everybody has a, a triangle shaped roof on their logo, right? right. There's nothing different. But uh, when, when there's something different, it stands out. So. I, yeah. I like it. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You like the pig too. Yeah. So uh, looking through your site, I see something that may be actually pretty pretty good for, for even for my own business, but I can mm-hmm. see so many, so much potential for this. Sure. You have virtual credit cards yep. mm-hmm. with cash back. So can you okay. tell me how this works? Yeah. So virtual credit cards. We're, credit, we're also a card issuing company. So that's, I think, one of the unique benefits that we also bring to the table, just to kind of Stripe. But the opposite model is Stripe charges you 1.5% to use their cards. We actually give you 1.5% back. And you can earn up to 2% if you're spending millions of dollars a month. So the cool thing is, is that most people in most sellers, actually, a lot of them, they use rewards cards. Yes, but a lot of them use debit cards. And you're not getting any cash back for that. So you can actually connect your check card to our virtual cards and push money in that way and then be able to make cash back on your actual, um, your own money instead of actually borrowing and and making interest, you can do it on your own cash. um, So the idea was to be the whole economy of a transaction initially. And what I mean by that is like marketplaces, um, every, for every purchase, there was, uh, for every sale, there was a purchase before that, right? So if you're selling something, you bought it from somewhere and in order to pay suppliers in real time, just like they do in the airlines, we actually can take a consumer transaction and then push it out the back end and pay the supplier with a card, right? Um, and that's typically, we can do it, push it to their bank, but the, the advantage of pushing it to a card is it's instant, it's anonymous, um, and you're making up to two and a half percent cash back on those transactions, right? So, you know, that's why using a card on the back end is, is beneficial, especially if you have a lot of suppliers that you're paying and all that. But you can also use it for media and all that good stuff too. Media spins, well, inventory. Yeah. Th- that's what I was going to ask you next, because if that's the case, and if it doesn't have any limits, no. I was wondering if I, so I have suppliers. Uh, for products, I have suppliers in China, India, Portugal. Mm-hmm. So sure. I have staff, you know, Philippines, Pakistan. Uh, I can pay mm-hmm. all these people, and they all have different currencies, of course. So I can, I can pay with the same card to all these people, and there's no yeah, limit. Yeah, you can. So, so you have cross border. If you just if you're using a U.S. card, then you'd have cross border fees. However, we can issue in 22 different currencies. So, essentially, you know you would just pick the most prominent ones that you're spending money in, right? And utilize those. Um, if you're if you're a media buyer, buying traffic in these other areas too, 
um, you know, you spending locally, you'll never have those cross border fees and the foreign exchange fees. So think about like all the U guys in Europe that are buying U.S. traffic, right? All those guys are paying, you know, three percent on the money because they're paying foreign exchange and cross border on, on all those transactions to Google or Facebook or whatever. Uh, so here, you'd actually be able to make cash back, which essentially is a, is almost like a four and a half percent up lift because of the three percent cost that they had before, right? Yeah. So th that's one of the reasons why I was thinking of that because. Uh, I spend a few million per year in, in advertising mm -hmm. uh, and I'm in Canada. So of sure. course I, I have that, that cross border as well. Mm -hmm. So in this case, for example, because it's not just me spending it, it I can issue the, these virtual cards. I'm sorry to keep hitting on the virtual cards, but I can issue cards to my team and You're monitor yeah. and monitor those cards. You could absolutely. And so like the idea for our platform, it also is like, Hey, Joe has got it. Hey, Joe, go buy some stuff at the store. I need the ladder and the whatever, right? You know, or whatever you're sending them to get. Right? Yeah. You can actually instantly send it to their phone and then they could go spend it at the store or, um, you know, on, you instantly use it online, you know, anywhere. So, because it's a MasterCard, right? Um, you know, and MasterCards are accepted worldwide. Nice, nice. Okay. So I got a. Uh... I got ideas here uh, already bubbly in my head. So, if you think um, about your spend specifically, like if you're buying U.S. traffic, you know you're playing those cross border fees, even on those sales that you're taking in too. So there's there's some cool things that we can do that to help pad your pad the uh, your 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 money on your side, so you don't have to keep on paying those types of fees. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, for example, these these cards as the uh, I, I'm assuming I would have a profit pay account. I could log into that account and then create my own limits if I give staff cards. Correct. You're basically putting, you're just putting denominations onto a card. They can be John Doe or, or you can actually, you can put, you can change the addresses and the names on all the things. So you can actually just distribute them as you see fit, pay suppliers, add suppliers, um, you know, and uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty seamless. You can use our API to do that too. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as as somebody that is in the fintech industry, uh, is it fair to assume that you are a crypto fan? Of course, yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. All right. Well, so, does um, Profit Pay have any connections yet with Crypto Pay? So, any uh, payment options? I mean, it's on the roadmap, so it's not there yet. Um, I think you know. So here's. I'm an investor. I have a lot of a lot of different you know uh, holdings inside of that space. I've been doing it for for years, but it's kind of like driving a Tesla, right? Uh, when you drive a Tesla, the cool thing about a Tesla is like its battery kind of goes fast. The problem is, is there's no superchargers anywhere, so like they're barely anywhere. So like you can't just pull in to uh, a gas station and supercharge automatically. You act, think about like I'm in live in Nevada. I gotta go to California. There's one supercharger station in between all that, right? The reason why I'm saying that is crypto is kind of like that right now, like. Everyone wants that shit, but like you can't spend it anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it's not as relevant today as it's going to be in like five years because it'll get more mainstream. And in, in I think the other side of it is people are starting to get aware of it. Now, the second step is now that people are aware of it and like, hey, more people are asking, can I spend it here? Can I use this here? Now people are like, yo, we got to put together platforms to actually take all these transactions. So I think that's the, that's the thing. It's like you're starting to see these superchargers pop up because it's frustrating as all hell to actually drive a Tesla and then you run out of battery. <laughs> You're like, you can't just go into a gas station and, and like fill it up in five seconds. Like you can't with gas, right? But that's where the world's going, but it's not there yet, you know? Okay, I gotcha. So I actually, um, I can I can really relate to, to that particular case of the Tesla uh, <laughs> because years ago I was in Europe and I had this Renault, which is a French car, uh -huh. that it was, um, it had a tank of, gas like propane uh -huh. in the trunk okay uh so it was it was super cheap to to run a car on propane uh -huh. but if the propane ran out where are you going to fill it right so, exactly yeah. so in order to fix that problem they added a gas tank to the car so okay. then the car had both so it had a propane and gas so yeah. you end up just driving with gas anyway <laughs> Exactly. That's like what the hybrid is, you know, it's like, um, although the, you know, I have the Porsche uh, SUV one and uh, it actually runs pretty well on the battery. It lasts for a long time. It's, it's a lot better than Tesla's battery life, I think. 
Yeah, nice. Well, I, I have it too. I have the Porsche SUV, but mine is the the 4.2 V8 turbo. Okay. So. Yeah. So no, no, yeah, no, yeah. no economy there. Is there yeah, no, 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 not a lot of economy. Exactly. I hear you. So um, profit pay. Yeah. Let's back into profit pay. Now, um, you are in a few industries, which is e-commerce. We already, you have, for example, a connection to Shopify, an app mm -hmm. in the Shopify store. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, online travel, media buying, we already talked. So uh -huh. uh, what other things are possible to do with profit pay? I think, well, you know, our, our, our focus right now is on, you know, e-commerce and, and marketplaces. So what we're seeing is that I speak at a lot of founder events and a lot of new founders coming in there. A lot of these new businesses are some sort of shape or form of a marketplace, right? And by 2023, they're saying that the majority of all shopping online is going to be done um, in marketplaces, most marketplaces, because the marketplaces that exist online are already so huge and the brands end up getting sucked into marketplaces. And then a lot of their sales come from there. Right. Yeah. So like Facebook is a marketplace for is an example. Right. So a lot of people sell on Facebook. That's that's a marketplace. Right. Um, so that's where we're focusing, like the DoorDash type of opportunities. Right. Because those are the largest opportunities on the planet right now. Um, you know, because when you when I go and get a DoorDash, I'm not just getting one client. I'm getting like Five million business, five million restaurants inside of that client, right? So um, that's why we love the marketplace, um, and we can do all the pay-ins, payouts. Um, we can ACH to hundreds of thousands of different accounts on the back end of a of a transaction. So if you are like a DoorDash, think about that, right? You have every single day you have one batch, right? You have one batch of of, of a million restaurants inside of that, right? Yeah. And then all those million restaurants want their money. So you have to be able to, to do that. And, and that's essentially the magic really is um, that's, I think what we, we can do well. So um, it puts us in um, a, an elite category of like a uh, type of FinTech because Stripe's the only other comp competition on, out there that's doing that and they're priced pretty high. So it doesn't take much to undercut them and actually still, you know, be able to monetize well and uh, service the needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. So this is just a prediction, but uh, something that I envision is now with Facebook metaverse, right. uh, I, I envision all these uh, virtual reality where people could uh, virtually go into any kind of marketplace or an actual yeah. store mm -hmm. and buy things mm -hmm. uh, in, in this marketplace. So I, I think the potential in there is if that's where they're going to go with it, it's going to be just huge so is this you know, something like that... the, the marketplaces really are kind of like the metaverse right you go in there and, and you're in a massive shopping mall like no matter where you're at so yeah exactly that, that's why like you even mentioned brands are joining these these marketplaces because your your individual store is because people are already in the marketplace they're already there right so if you're not there you're not getting that sale unless they're like determined to get your brand but that kind of puts you at a disadvantage right so you know, it's like eventually you go in there unless you're just an elitist. Right. And there's nothing wrong with being an elitist. I think <laughs> big, the, bad, the baddest brands on the planet should be. Right. Um, but, you know, they don't have to participate. But actually, all of them eventually do. If you look at it, like all the grocery stores, all the guys that are making lots of money, they're they're not fools. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, a Nike pulled from Amazon. Right. Uh, right. Well, so. yeah, but they're still like, you know, they're still selling Facebook and think about that. That's a marketplace. You know, like there's millions of like, then there's, I mean, you know, it just, yeah. I mean, that's the way, right? Yeah. And I guess sometimes by pulling out, they also make it like the, the, the forbidden fruit, like, oh, now I have to go look for them myself. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so. Exactly. So it's like for Jordans, you know, getting the Jordans, you have to go to like a specific corporate store to get the, the right ones. Otherwise, you, yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Amazing. So now, if anybody that is listening wants to join Profit Pay and they are wondering uh, what are the sign-up fees, what are the costs for the cards, for example, annual costs, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so there's no cost to sign up. Um, you know, just out of the box, if you are a brand, a brand new brand, and you don't have any history, nothing like that, and it, comparatively to Stripe, we're 2.79 and 20 as opposed, as opposed to their 2.9 to 30. Um, and it's the process is quick. So you're, we, there's a form that you fill out and, um, you know, we prove you guys in less than uh, 10 seconds. And um, then we get you guys mids within 24 hours. So you guys can start pro processing payments within a day. Um, 
you know, and uh, with great rates, and then we can always reduce over time. So you can go to profitpay.io to get more information there. Um, you know, you can follow me on LinkedIn, at Chase Harmer on LinkedIn, and also at Profit Pay on LinkedIn as well. Amazing. And before I let you go, I have one more question because sure. everybody that's listening is an entrepreneur or wants to be an entrepreneur. So how does one go out there and raise $25 million? Is it <laughs> is it the, all about the idea and what your brand or your project can do? Or are there other tricks? <laughs> That, you know, I think, um, you know, looking back on it, like I thought you had to build product and then, you know, that product would allow you to go raise a bunch of money. But that's actually not true. It, it's really about the idea if you can solidify patents behind it. But if you can sh- sell the potential and you you can get in front of the right people with the right idea and put together the right team, because people like, if you're not an experienced entrepreneur, you have to have a team around you that pe- that people are going to want to invest in because they're not investing in you because you're nobody, right? You might have a great idea, and that's the truth, right? And it's the same with me. I mean, I was lucky enough to have, um, you know, along my journey, I closed a really large hotel association when I was 28, and I ran hotels for like eight years. And those guys ended up being my first investors, and then those guys helped me raise all the capital. So, um, I was lucky to have those kind of guys there with me. But I think looking back on like, I was like, man, that would have been super hard without them right um and i just realized and i and, and i was we invested in another company that this guy raised a shitload of capital like just a gigantic amount of capital but he wasn't building the technology yet he was basically building the team putting all the right ingredients together building the framework and then you know it just was like and then you have all the right things and everything makes sense to an investor they put the dump money on to 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 really kind of light the fire and you can sell it that way so i feel like it's really all about that in the end you know it's not about I mean, unless you're the engineer and you're building the product yourself, you know, which a lot of visionaries and guys like myself, we're not, we're not tech founders. So, you know, we have the great ideas, but you know, you need the people to build it. So, and that that costs a lot, a lot of money too. So I feel like you get the dream, you get the right team, then you can, you can kind of reverse back and build anything, you know? Yeah. I think that's the way to go. So Chase, do you think 20 years from now, you're also going to have your own rocket company? (laughs) <laughs> no, no, actually. So like one thing that's taught me about being a founder was like, it's the hardest thing that I've ever done to actually grow a company, like a tech company from, from nothing to, to have an actual product that's working in the market. And it was just a tremendous struggle. So I just want to invest and, um, and let other entrepreneurs endure that pain. So like, I'm never going to like build a company from scratch again like that, but I will be invested in a lot of different opportunities out there um, later. So yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, gotcha. And uh, again, I can I can vouch for that one as well because I, I founded my own agency and then I wanted to be the CEO because it's you know it's the cool thing at first, but I quickly realized like what I want is I want to be a worker in my own company. Right? So, <laughs> so that's what I, I did. <laughs> I gave those positions away, and yeah. I work. I, I I do. I work more hours than anybody else, but I'm a worker in my company. You're doing right? it for the exit game too, though, right? So, like, you're doing it for the exit game. That's who I am, right? I discovered that along the way. Is that like I didn't want to be the operations guy and like make all those decisions. Like, I want to be helping with that, obviously, and I'll put all the hours in. But I'm gonna do what I'm good at, and I'm filling those gaps, you know. So I hear you. Amazing. Chase, so thank you very much. For everybody that's listening, I'm going to have the information on the show notes. I'm going to have profitpay.io in the show notes. I'll also have Chase's LinkedIn in case you want to connect with him. And Chase, thank you very much. Uh, You'll probably pretty soon see an account show up from me because I'm I'm very interested in this uh, and this stuff, particularly on those cashbacks. It sounds amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, and you, you being in Canada, buying U.S. traffic, it makes a lot of sense. So, you know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right on, man. Awesome. This is good fun. Thank you good very time. much. It was a pleasure. Okay. You got it. Man. Talk soon. Okay, bye-bye.